Today, we are going to talk about miniature photography and how you can do it without expensive equipment. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connecting to the great mind, the great spirit. Welcome back to the Channel Collectors. So, today we are going to talk about miniature photography and how we can do it without expensive photographic equipment. As you guys can see, you've been watching my YouTube for quite a bit. You guys might think that I'm using very expensive stuff, but what I'm actually using is some IKEA lights. Other than IKEA lights, I'm also using a pretty basic camera. I'm using a point and shoot camera and I just sort of make do with what I have. And this video, I'm going to try to share with you guys some of the basic stuff I've used and probably you guys already have them at home and you can optimize your miniature photography setup. So on top of that, I also learned a lot from Shannon whom I've met at the Simon Virtual Expo last month. And yeah, he's a professional photographer and I really learned a lot from his professional knowledge. And today I hope to share with you guys some of the tips and tricks which I learned last month too. So first and foremost, we're going to talk about what you will need for miniature photography. Two to three table lamps, white or black background, a tripod which costs about 30 to 40 dollars, and the most expensive thing, a camera. For me, I'm using a Canon G7X Mark II, which is not an expensive DSLR, it's a basic point and shoot camera. And lastly, you will need a box, smaller box, smaller, yes, small box. So now I'm going to share with you my layout for miniature photography. So as you guys can see on my setup, I'm just using a normal table with two lamps set up by the side with black or white paper at the back. The camera is set up on a tripod which is approximately 1 to 1.5 meters away from the background. So now I'm going to share with you guys some pointers and some tips which I use to shoot miniatures. First tip would be the camera height. For me, camera height, I tend to level it with the subject's face. So say for example, I'm shooting a Stormcast Eternal or I'm shooting a, say, Ragnar Blackmane, I'll try to keep the camera level to his face so that the camera isn't shooting from top down and that affects the final picture and yeah, you don't want the miniature to always look like a miniature. You want the miniature to look like a character. Similarly, when I'm shooting uh, Chaos Knight, say for example, the Knight Desecrator or the Knight Rampager, as you guys can see, what I'm doing is that I'm raising the camera height so that I can level it with the subject's face and head. And that is how I decide the height of the camera. Tip number two, camera settings. So when I'm shooting my miniatures, I tend to shoot my miniatures on aperture priority. I'm gonna explain more of that later, but the first thing is to have as high an aperture value as possible. A high aperture value would increase the depth of view so that it doesn't look blurry in some areas. As you guys can see comparing this photograph right here versus this photograph, the first photograph has a more shallow depth of view which as a miniature painter, you don't want that because you spend all that time blending, edge highlighting, and all that hard work only to have it blurred by the camera. What are you thinking? Shouldn't do that. But shallow depth of view also can be useful at some times when you're creating more dramatic looking shots. And that is when you use shallow depth of view. The second setting you should be concerned about is ISO. ISO is the sensitivity about the camera sensor. You don't want the camera sensor to be too sensitive to light because when you increase the ISO, say for example above 800, what you get is you will get very grainy images as you can see right here. Right now, I've tuned down the ISO to about 400 and you can see what you can see. The miniature looks a lot less grainy and this is the result that you're looking for. Now, the third thing, shutter speed. Shutter speed, I leave it on auto because I'm putting it on aperture priority. That means you set the aperture, you set the ISO, camera does the rest. However, there is a drawback. What is this drawback now? So with a very, very high aperture value, which means less light gets in and a very insensitive ISO, what's going to happen is that your shutter speed is going to be very, very long. 
sometimes up to half a second. So what happens next? If you're holding the camera on hand, your camera will shake and you will get a very blurry image. What you will need is then our tripod. The tripod comes in with a two second timer on the camera and when you tap the shutter button, you can leave. The camera will shoot a picture after two seconds and this allows the picture to be as clean and as shake free and as sharp as possible. So here are some more advanced tips which I will share with you. So for miniature photography, the positioning of the lighting is very important. First, you will need to have a key light. The key light will probably need to point at the miniature, not too high above to have too many cast shadow and not from the underneath that you have very weird lighting. You want it to be pointing straight on at your miniature so that you can show off all your hard work. As for the second light, for the white background, I tend to have the light pointed at the background so that the background can be illuminated. For darker backgrounds and if you want that really, really dark background, what you would do is to shift the entire setup further away from the background, leave the background further and that gives you a very dark background because there is no light shining on the background paper. The third little tip is a field light. If you can afford it and if you have lamps lying around, a third light pointing from the background to the miniature would create this thing called a field light. The field light allows edges of the miniature to catch on some light so that the darker areas don't just fade in into the background. There we have it. That's how you do miniature photography without using expensive equipment. Gone are the days where you need a softbox and a DSLR and you can even do this on a phone. If you want to improve this setup, you can always put some tracing paper, put some parchment paper on your lamps to diffuse the light. What do you think about this video? Let me know in the comments below. What other tips would you like me to cover? Also, let me know in the comments below. The next video will be covering weathered steel pipes and you should check it out when it comes out tomorrow. I'd like to take this time thank my patrons too. Because of the support of my patrons, I'm able to produce painting video content so that we all can become better painters together. For as little as a dollar, what you can do, you can check out my finished works earlier than anyone else in this world. This month's exclusive patron would be Non-Metallic Metal, Go Overbrush on the Night Desecrator, and I hope you can go on to our Patreon page and support me and become a patron too. However, if you can't become a patron, that's fine too. I'd like to thank you for your time and watching to the end. However, if you can, please like and subscribe because this helps the channel grow and it helps me and the channel a lot. I'd like to thank you for your time and hope to catch you in the next video. See you. Thank you.